So, um, Machu Picchu, that's me. I've been working for Earth's Edge now for five years and done over 27 expeditions with them. So I feel quite privileged to have seen quite a, a, a wonderful number of places. Um, getting pretty excited about Kenyan waterfalls. The Earth's Edge has been going since 2007 and has just been growing all the way. They're an amazing company to work for, actually. As a guide, it's, it's fantastic because I never feel like I'm on my own out there. I have an amazing backup crew. Um, I'm in contact with them and sat phones every day. So if I feel supported, which is great, and then you guys are supported. So it, they're, they're absolutely wonderful to work for. The, so this is the, the trek overview itself the classic picture of, of Machu Picchu. The landscape is like nothing I've ever seen before. It's phenomenal with just these hugely steep, steep uh, cliffs and, and mountains, which makes the trekking quite interesting at times, but um, and maybe slightly challenging, but phenomenal. And then the clouds that come in, the atmosphere, it's just a magical place to be, which is fantastic. So it's, um, how many days is it, 16 days? 16 days. So we get there day one and two, you travel from Dublin to Cusco and you stay in Cusco there that first night. Lovely hotel, really comfy. And then you get to travel the next day then is in Cusco itself. <coughs> so day three, you can have a look around Cusco, but there's also a trek as well, which is all about acclimatization because Cusco is nearly at three and a half thousand meters. So it can be a little bit shocking to the system at first. So we want to stay there sleep there, get used to it, rest, um, and then prepare for your trek. So it's quite an important, um, beautiful place. Obviously a bit of shopping to be had, which is always kind of exciting. Um, and you can see the market square there. Has anyone been there before, Cusco? Yeah. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then the trek, then we come up to this nice uh, statue, which I actually don't know the name of. I didn't look that up. Um, do you know the name of it? No. <laughs> You go up there, have a look. Spend <laughs> <laughs> here in Rio, <laughs> and then uh, and come back down and have a lovely dinner. So then we get on to the trekking. Now the the first six days are the trek that comes around to Chukikoro, and then after that you hit the Scott Salkante trek that we have been doing up until now. So the days are quite varied. So you can see it's very green and luscious here. Quite wonderful. Uh, Chukikara itself, so it's perched right up on the top there at 3,000 meters plus and you're going to sleep there as well if you go on the trip which is quite exciting um, but you can see very much untouched as such so quite special from that point of view and there it is as well beautiful scenery oh, well, what, uh, what time of the year is it? Uh, what time of the year do you go out? So we go out um, from June, August, September and October. So it is the, it's, because here's the summer and there is like the winter or autumn. It's a milder season milder. down there rather than going in. But like everything else when you're up in the mountains, the weather can be very good. It's got to do its own thing. Yeah. So you can get everything from snow to rain to really hot. So it is very, very mixed. Um, and then from Chukikoro to get back to where we're going to Salonte, it's absolutely fantastic. So you're going over three or four passes, so we could get a bit of snow. It's quite, it's very mountainous as such. And then, as I said, down through these lovely, luscious plateaus. And just looking at the, the scenery and the, how dramatic it is, it's fantastic. So there is a little bit of up and down for sure. <laughs> so as you go over the passes and on up those three or four passes, the highest then you're going to get to is about... 3,600 meters, so you will be sleeping at a good altitude where it could be quite chilly as well. So that's all the excitement of it. You can see here, and it's also then you can see that you're in tents. So when we arrive in Cusco, obviously you're in a hotel for two nights, and then we go out and uh, we're getting the whole expedition feel by sleeping in tents. Sorry. And then as you can see, the higher we go, the more mountainous and snow capped it gets. They look like they're having a miserable time. <laughs> Again, beautiful. What day are we on now? And some of the passes that we go over, which are quite exciting. <laughs> so 
And they're getting a good bit of sunshine, which is quite nice. And lovely, that real mountainous feel. And then we come down into a little bit more luscious, which also gives this wonderful flora and fauna that you're going to get in this area here. So, I mean, the birds are out of this world. Anything from congers to um, hummingbirds, fantastic. And then lots and lots of orchids and different types of plants. So it is, it's phenomenal. A lot of coffee. And in fact, on this day here, we end up in a, a coffee plantation and they cook a dinner, kind of they dig the pit, make a nice a hot fire, cover it with big coffee leaves and, and make a bit of a, a feed for you, which is quite, quite interesting. And that day then, because now we're on about day seven, and you probably haven't washed all that much, it's feeling a little bit smelly, there is a, a nice surprise, <laughs> look at that. There is hot springs that we can go and visit that night, which is, is quite wonderful and, and refreshing. And also when we were there, the sun was going down, so you could just see the stars and the big mountains as you're sitting in these hot springs, so absolutely amazing. Um, then we're moving along, and again, we are quite high-ish, but we follow the, the river here, which is, it gives you a different, like you feel like you're walking in a different country at this point in time. So you've gone up over these lovely passes and high mountains, and then you're down in this fantastic area, green, water, and um, you're coming into Agua Caliente, Caliente itself. Okay. So and it looks like it's nice and warm as well for those guys. And the trains that come along look, are quite old-fashioned and quite regal looking. So it's, some of them even have uh, glass roofs on them. So when you're in the tra trains, you can look up and see the tops of the mountain. And then, Agua Caliente, no more camping, sadly. And then we can come up here and see Machu Picchu. So you spend a whole day in Machu Picchu. So we'll get a guided tour when we arrive up there. Um, and then you have the option, if you'd like to, to actually climb to the summit of Machu Picchu. So it's a Machu Picchu mountain, which is lots of steps going right up to the top. And then from there, if it's good weather, unfortunately we had a bit of cloud, but if it's good weather, you can see down and just look down on the whole city as such, which is very spectacular indeed. Lovely. And then I think... So these guys here, because they don't want lawnmowers and machinery up there, these guys do that job for them. So they keep the grass all nice and low so we can wander around and have a look, which is quite a nice idea. And they're quite tame. They will come up to you and say hello. Probably take your lunch if you're not watching. <laughs> um, and there you go. Now in the afternoon as such, what we tend to do is leave people to their own devices. So if you would like to stay up there and wander around a little bit more, find a corner, appreciate the whole thing, you're more than welcome to do that. There's buses that go up and down all the time, so we tend to get the really early buses at about 6, 6.30. Um, you see these big long queues and you're quite put off and you're like, oh, God, I don't want to stand in a queue. But the buses come through so, so quickly that literally you're there for a very short period of time. And um, <clears throat> as I said, we had our tour, we go climb up the top of the mountain and then you come down, you can wander around and we just meet back down in the town later on that evening and have your dinner. So you can really spend some time there and appreciate it, which is quite wonderful. Um, there they are, munching away. Keeping the whole place nice. And that's the route up to Machu Picchu Mountain itself. So lots of steps. I hope it clears for them. They look like they're going into the clouds. Yes, they did. So you can see they're actually blocking it from behind there. You can see the city itself. Phenomenal. <coughs> and also when we got there in the morning, it was quite cloudy. And then it cleared and it was just so atmospheric. Okay, so after we come back down to Agua Caliente, there is... You can wander around there for a little while in the afternoon if you come up the mountain and you can, it's very pretty, there's lots of shopping again if you want to do that. And then we stay there that night and then the next morning we get up, get the train and get the bus back to Cusco. Okay. Um, have a bit of a, a nice dinner, sit in a proper restaurant, which is very cool. 
Um, and then, did I have, yeah. So the next day, day 14, <coughs> is a free day. So you can stay around the town if you like, <coughs> or you can go to this wonderful place, Rainbow Mountain. I presume you've heard of Rainbow Mountain. Stunning, yeah. So it's a three hour <coughs> drive out to here. And it's about five or six hour trek in and out. It's a good height. You're nearly up at 5,000 meters. But I have not had, I've not been there, unfortunately, because this is in a new itinerary. But I believe <coughs> it's absolutely spectacular and well worth the visit. Um, so those people who go and visit there will be spending the whole day doing that, obviously, while the others relax back. But it's just stunning. Um, and then food along the trek. So, like all the Earth's Edge trips, I always think I'm going to get out there, shed a few pounds. Uh, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's, uh, you're fed really, really well. And of course, because we're at altitude and we're trekking all day, we encourage you to eat a lot because it's very important in the whole acclimatization process. So, like everything else, we will, uh, if people have dietary requirements, that's not a problem. We can deal with that. And even on the trek, so when we're camping, it's just the food is ridiculous. I don't know how they manage to cook that and produce that kind of food for us. Um, and then when we get down into the town, then if you're a meat lover, then the meat is pretty good there um, in the towns. But you can see, like, we're getting two, three course meals, lots of things, eggs, porridge for breakfast, good lunches, soups, stews. Um, lots of avocados. It's a really quite spectacular. So this is day four. <laughs> um, it's not a technical trek. Okay, so we're not going to be doing this. It's definitely pass all the way. Yeah, we're going to get high at some places, but it's it's trekking. So as long as you can put one foot in front of the other and have a little bit of determination. It's absolutely fine. Well, I would be quite excited. Um, so AMS, we, as I said before, we are, we're definitely at altitude, and you are going to feel that a little bit. Actually, the going into Cusco is almost the most shocking thing that your body is going to feel when you get there because you're suddenly at that height. But the trick to altitude sickness is that we go at a nice steady pace. We, the itinerary is, is done in such a way that you're up and down, so you go up high, then maybe you sleep a little bit lower, or we go at a really, really, really steady pace. So it's definitely nice, because the way I look at it is when you finish the day, you shouldn't come in exhausted, because if you come exhausted, then your body has to really recover. At the end of the day, we need to come in yeah, a little bit tired, but you're just resting so your body can acclimatize at that point in time. So you're walking for... 10 days trekking, yeah? So it's, it's a long time to be doing it day after day after day. So we need to go at this <coughs> nice steady pace and get our stamina the whole way along. So that's the one thing is we're going to go at a nice pace, we've got a nice route. The other thing is that you rehydrate lots. So we're gonna recommend that you drink three to four liters a day. Um, the other thing is that you eat well, which is quite nice. And then you rest really well. So don't worry if you can't sleep, if you have several days that you can't sleep, the doctor can help you out there. But it's all about resting. So basically, your body has to acclimatize. So if you feed it and you rest it and you rehydrate it, it gives you a better chance then. So that's how, how we approach all our expeditions that are going to altitude. So weather, as we've seen so far from these clips, beautiful sunshine. You haven't seen any rainy clips. Notice that. Um, we can get a little bit of rain. And then because we're going to be higher, you're going to be sleeping at 3,600 meters, it has the opportunity to get a bit chilly. And all mountain environments, the ambient temperature is quite cold. So when you're in the sunshine, you're nice and warm. The moment the sun goes down, it gets a little bit nippy. So, but that's just the right clothing <coughs> after yourselves there. But um, pretty impressive campsite. Look at that. Sorry, who carries the, the tents? Or, uh, the, the, the other guys, you know, all these tents are being carried by Mules. Someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, fitness and training. So as we said, 
you're going to be on the trail for quite a lovely uh, number of days. It's multi-day trekking. So you do have to have a certain amount of fitness for sure. And like everything else, I certainly am a great believer in that to train for a sport, you do the sport. So yeah, you can go to the gym, work on strengthening your legs, your bum, get aerobic fitness. But ideally it's to get out in the hills and get walking up the hills, walking down the hills, getting all that balance, balance getting the ankles working. So that's really important. Um, but obviously in today's society, time is always precious. We have a lot of commitments, but definitely trying to get out into the hills and trying to get out into the hills not only on your Saturday, but on your Sunday as well, so that you're doing that second day. And even if there's a bank holiday, maybe going out and doing a third day as well, just to build up that nice stamina, um, which is really cool. Oh. So there is a pre-departure weekend, two months out, which is really helpful, actually. It's, it's free. It's normally somewhere down in Wicklow, uh, Glendalough, but I try and encourage people to go on it. A, you get to meet your guide, which is quite nice. B, you get to meet all the other people that are on the trip. But it's a real reality trek. It is a, um, the morning we have a lot of lectures, so we'll go through in great detail all the equipment that you need, the itinerary, um, medical issues, all that information so that you are well prepared for your trip. And then we go out for a hike, and then the next day we go out for a hike. So you can talk to the doctor, ask them lots of questions, because they'll be there as well. You can talk to people that are on your trip, and especially if you're going out on your own. It's kind of nice that if you're turning up at the airport and you're a little bit apprehensive about this trek anyway, that at least you see friendly faces and you, and you know people are there. But the difference in how people arrive on the trek, how prepared they are, is quite dramatic. So I would, I would definitely encourage people to come on, on the training weekend. Okay. So, what happens on the general trekking day is we like to start nice and early, for sure. So it depends on the day, but it could be a six o'clock rise, it could be a seven o'clock rise. Um, we pack up our, our gear and our tents so that while we have breakfast, the guys then can take down our tents, pack them all away, and um, then they're carried away by mules. So all you're carrying on your back is your day pack. So you're going to have your small day pack with six or seven kilos in it, all the emergency things that you need like snacks, water, warm jacket, sun hat, camera, all that type of thing. That goes in your day pack. And then you don't see your bigger bag. Your bigger bag then is taken by mules or later on taken by a jeep. So you won't see that during the day and then that's ready for you when you come in and for the night. you have like a, I don't know, is this not like an airplane that they give you a, ba a tag or how do they... I mean, it's only us. Uh, it doesn't get lost no. in the mountain, I think. No, not unless something very dramatic happens. Ah, okay. Yeah, but in general, no. But you don't leave them in storage or something. You use car. You don't leave them in Cusco or anything. You like can that. leave in Cusco. You can leave all your travelling clothes. Mm. So all the things that you don't need. When you're out on the trek, you're mm -hmm. only allowed to bring twelve kilos with you, and they give you a soft bag. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through that in a minute about dry bags and everything. And then you have everything that you need on the trek mm -hmm. in a dry bag in that bag that they're going to give you. And normally those bags are numbered, etc. And uh, then they're taken. But it's our, it's our team, it's our local team. No one else is involved in that. So there you go, yeah. So then we'll trek and either we'll have a pack lunch or sometimes we come around the corner and they have put up our mess tent and they've been cooking all the way and we can sit down to a nice hot meal depending on where we are, okay? Um, and then we'll trek on again, and depending on the day that's in it, some days obviously are shorter than others, um, you'll either come in for about four o'clock, have a little relax, big dinner, and then normally to bed early, or if we can get a bit in a bit earlier, then there's time if there's a village to wander around the village, etc. Okay, so that's a, that's a normal day as such. Each trip has a local, has, a, has their local team, and then they have the Irish guides, so it's a qualified guide here from Ireland comes with you to look after you. And then we also have a medic, we have a doctor with us and a big med kit that stays with us at all time. Okay. Um, so obviously everyone has their own reasons for doing these, either for the scenery or to go and see Machu Picchu. But it's great because normally everyone on the trip is very much like-minded. So you, you actually meet a great bunch of people which is quite fantastic. 